Well, about a year ago, uh, my wife's grandmother gave me this slightly older uh, Jet 14-inch bandsaw. It's, it's been a fantastic saw so far. Uh, I added the Craig um, fence system for it, and this thing is, is really, really nice too. I've been very happy with that. Uh, really, my only complaint about it is the cheapy blade that came with the saw. Now, like I said, it's a cheap blade. It's pretty easy to replace blades. Um, the reason I haven't done it before is I've kind of been hemming and hawing back and forth thinking I don't want to just buy more blades to fit this size if I ever think I want to put the riser block in it and you know go from a 6 inch saw to a or 6 inch resaw height to a 12 inch. No point in buying short blades if I'm going to buy long blades eventually and then have no use for those short ones. So I just kind of had this internal struggle back and forth for a long time. and. I finally decided I need a blade, it's, you know, stupid not to, and I decided that from the research that I've done, I'm never going to regret having the extra six inches of resaw height, so I went ahead and got the block kit and I bought uh, a new blade, just a single blade to start out with that I'm sure I'm going to add to and have, a, have more of a set with anyway, but anyway, this is, this is an older jet saw, but it, uh, as far as I can tell, these things are pretty much unchanged since this version up to today's version, uh, other than the color. So I'm going to have a white block sticking out of my blue-green saw, but I don't really care personally. I could paint it, but it just doesn't matter to me. Uh, but other than the color, I should be able to just bolt it right in and you wouldn't know any difference. The kit should just work just fine. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm planning to do today and we'll see how it goes. The first steps in the process after taking the blade off is to remove the plastic blade guard over on this side and then to get the switch housing taken apart as well. The next step is to actually loosen and remove the big bolt that holds the upper arm assembly in place. And luckily, I have a very large socket set. This is a 24 millimeter socket. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to get this apart because I've only got the one crescent wrench. So it takes just a little bit to loosen it. And then being kind of careful not to let the whole thing fall on me. Looks like the bolt comes right out. And then next, you'll lift the whole upper wheel arm assembly off of the saw. Uh, if you had two people you could just lift it up, put the block in place and set it back down, but because I'm attempting this by myself I'm going to have to take the block off and set the whole thing down. Oh. It's not too heavy. I was a little concerned about how heavy that was going to be, but not too bad. So now we're going to find out if this new riser block kit fits this older model of saw. <coughs> And it looks like those pins line up just fine. Um, we might just have a slight issue with the amount of paint inside this, this hole here. So I have to knock it down just a little bit. But it's seated just fine. And now that the block is in place uh, and seated down, I need to put the upper wheel assembly back in place uh, and line it up with those pins. So, since this wasn't too heavy, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. A little bit more difficult to get underneath it and look at it, but it lines up and sits just right. But it's not holding itself in place anymore, so unlike what I just did, you probably want to make sure you have your bolt sitting here ready to go for you. So that all I have to do is drop this back on those pins lined up. I get the bolt to go through, which it looks like it's not going to do that. It's too long and the top of the bolt bumps into that peg right there. This time I'm going to start with the bolt in my hand in place 
slide it down through the hole. There. Now everything is in and nice. And now I just have to get the bolt on from the underside. The new white blade guard assembly has these little keeper teeth um, that, that hold this plate in place, keep it from spinning, on the front and the back side. So I think in theory you could use this guide facing front or back depending on whether or not you wanted to just completely trap the blade in there or to have the, the channel out in front. The next thing will be to remount the switch housing, but instead of putting it back in the original two holes, they've drilled and tapped holes into the riser block. Uh, that way you can put it back exactly at the same height that it was before. So right here, we're gonna take the blade guide off of the guide post. Then we just loosen the locking knob here and the guide post can pull all the way out. Oh. Uh, here's a good little piece of information. When things say note or important in bold letters, pay attention. Uh, behind the set screw is a spring and steel ball. That's what I didn't pay attention to. I didn't read that because I rushed through it and I almost lost that steel ball. So pay very close attention. That would have been a bad thing to lose. The proper technique to this is going to be you loosen the set screw but you don't pull it all the way out. You just want to take some of the pressure off of that spring. You can take out your, your loosen your knot, your locking knob, so that this thing wants to slide freely. And in order to keep that, that ball bearing from just popping out this side, they tell you to take your new guide rod and put it right on top of the old one and use it to slide right out the bottom. That way, as it transitions from one to the next, that ball can't pop out then you can just put this back in place and then put some pressure back on that allen wrench or on that set screw so that this thing has a little bit of tension on it but not you know not so much that it won't move but definitely enough that it doesn't move on its own and now we just need to take the blade guide assembly from the bottom put that back on and tighten it back down. So before when I was trying to slide this up and down, this blade guide was actually running into the back of this, but by sliding the whole guide out a little bit before I tighten these down, it seems like it's, it's got enough clearance all the way around. just about to slide off the top, so I'm going to get this thing adjusted, um, get it ready to go, and then we'll test it out. Well, it cut just fine in a straight line. I also cut a curve just to see what it could do. Um, I don't really have a lot to base that on, but you know, that cut a half a circle in about three and a half inches, and I was making that as tight as I could make it. So that's still a pretty good, pretty good curve for a blade that's starting to get a little bit wider than what I'm used to. Based on what I had to work with before and what I've got now, I am, I'm pretty tickled. This is, this is looking like it's going to be a pretty good deal for me. So anyway, thanks, and we'll try to do it again later.